Shaka, the Lord of us, and say it others way. In the name of the Lord Jesus, 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 Jes
you got to kill them prophets of Baal. What's a prophet of Baal? A prophet of Baal is one that uses their gifts for financial gain. Oh, can I get a witness in the house? We use them for financial gain. God saying, kill them prophets. He said, kill all of them. Hello, somebody. But here come Jezebel. Everybody think that Jezebel is just a whore and a hooker. Come on, somebody. But Jezebel used her beauty to lure men under her control. Come on, Shata. Can I get a witness in the house? Oh, you may not like this, but the spirit of Jezebel could be in a man or a woman. Oh, come on, somebody. It's not just a woman. It's the spirit of Jezebel. Come on. In the book of Revelation, it talked about the spirit of Jezebel, how she, how she would lay in wait, huh? and she would get you in the bed. Come on, somebody. And once she had you in the bed, she got you. You were laid in her bed of purple. Come on, somebody. And what does that mean? It could be a man luring you women. Come on, somebody. And the Bible talks about silly women laden with sins, luring you into his bed. And then the same way with you brothers. You got these silly women laid with sin, luring you into their bed. But you got women that are saved you don't want to listen to. You don't want to hear what they got to say. Can I get a witness in the house? But they're luring you into the spirit of Jezebel. What does that mean? I'm using my gifts and my talent to make merchandise of you. The Bible says in the last days they will come into the church to make merchandise of you. Some folk come into the church to hunt you down. I was having a conversation with somebody the other day, and I'm, I'm about to be wrapped up here. I had a conversation with somebody the other day. We were at the park, and I said, don't you know the devil recognized devil? Devil recognized Satan can walk in here and somebody, and he know who, who he can sleep with in here. He know who he can sleep with. And he know who he can gangbang with. Can I get a witness in the house? And he know who he can get caught up in his gossip. Come on. How is it somebody that been here for the first time can pick out the gospel right away? Because birds of a feather flock together. They walk right in and recognize you. Hello, somebody. And they join you because they know you're not fully saved. Oh, oh y'all don't hear me. And next thing you know, outside the church, you're building friendships with the world. And the Bible says the friendships with the world is an enemy against God. Because they're not going to encourage you to go to church. And they're going to encourage you to live holy. You hear what Brother Daryl testified? He went and he looked. And he said, that used to be me. And I saw all the time I wasted. Sometimes you don't realize what you have wasted in your life. And how many opportunities you miss till God pull you out of it. And you're able to look back and say, was that me? Was that me wasting my time? Wasting time in relationships and Wasting time in business partnerships and wasting time in a church where I wasn't growing. Hello, somebody. Come out, she told that other. She come out. Can I get a witness in the house? Sometimes you don't see your losses until you step back. Huh? So the Bible says Elijah killed all the prophets. And then Jezebel, the spirit, somebody say the spirit of Jezebel, always threatening to take you out. Threatening to take you out. Come on, somebody. I remember there was a woman in the New Testament, she was a psychic. And then her masters, you know, they were her, her, her money makers, they were her pimps. And what she would do is she would go tell fortunes and make them a lot of money. And all of a sudden, one day she ran into Paul and, and she was pre preaching the truth. Come on, somebody. You ever see anybody preach the truth, but something about them just, whoo, it's just getting on your nerve. Hello, somebody. It said they sound right, they look right, but there's something funny about it. Come on. I can't see it, but I can feel it in my spirit. And she would follow him and say, these are the men of God. Hear them. These are the men of God. And he turned around. He said, what kind of spirit are you? That demonic spirit was acknowledging of the truth that this is of God. Hello, somebody. He rebuked that spirit out of her. And she could no longer do psychic. She couldn't do the cards. And she couldn't do all that. And the masters got them put in jail because they got the woman delivered from that demon. You got to understand, God's people are not the only ones that can see. You got psychics that can see. You got people that do tarot cards. They flip them cards. They tell you in a minute what's going to happen to you. And it's going to happen because you got to understand the devil can see too. But I don't want the devil to see what's happening with me. Amen. Because what happens to his attachment when he sees what can happen to you, he puts a plan behind it to bring you down. When God sees your future, God sees you being elevated. He sees you being blessed. 
He sees you walking into victory. Can I get a witness in the house? I don't know about you, but I got the victory and the devil's under my feet. I don't need to go see Mother Matsuka and Mother Lubu. And they don't need to throw no powder in my letters. Hello, somebody. And cast no spell over me so I spray good luck spray all over me. Yes! That is demonic. That's of the devil. I don't have no blue oil. I don't have no green oil. I don't have no red oils in this church. I got pure 100% olive oil that I bought straight from the store. Come on, somebody. And I anointed it. Hello, somebody. And ain't no different color oils. And I ain't got no candles burning in my office. I tell you right now, devil, you don't need to burn no candles for no good luck. <laughs> you might as well say hallelujah. Because when you start getting into that stuff, you start calling spirits into your house. And I'm telling you from experience, all my siblings are messed up in their older age because of this stuff. Good luck, Spray. I remember we, got, we took over a church in Compton, and there was a lady pastor. And the guy had evicted the lady pastor. Are you with me? He evicted the lady pastor. And so when we went in there to clean out the church, guess what we found? In a lady pastor's church. When we cleaned out her office, we found candles in the form of sexual organs. Can I get a witness in the house? If you got to burn a candle to get a man, you going to get the devil. If you got to throw some oil to get a man, you going to get a trouble. Come on, somebody. Because God will give you a husband and God will give you a wife. He ain't going to give you no girlfriend. I just want me a lady friend, somebody to hang out with. That ain't coming from God. And I tell people, don't ask me, well, Pastor, could you just show me who my wife going to be? And I said, why, why God need to show you? You ready to marry her? Uh, well, no, I don't, I'm not ready to get married. I just want to see who she is so I can have some hope. Come on, somebody. No, so you can have a bed partner. So you can cohabitate. Hello, somebody. Can I get a witness in the house? But if you're ready to get married, I will pray God send them a wife. And be ready to get married. Not cohabitate. We're going to see if it works out. No. No, whatever God put together going to work out. Amen. Can I get a witness in the house? Amen. Well, Pastor, I just want a boyfriend. I just need to know that that man is in my life so that when I'm ready, I can get married and I can have the hope of that man. No, you can have the hope of that man. <laughs> you need a husband. You don't need a boyfriend. You need a husband. You know what's so crazy? The word boyfriend is not in the Bible. Have you ever read it? Has anybody here? Please correct me if you're on TV. Show me where it said somebody had a boyfriend. It didn't even say somebody had a girlfriend. That's words you made up. And what is the interpretation of boyfriend, girlfriend? According to entertainment tonight, it's somebody you can make a baby with illegally without getting married. You want the privilege of marriage, but not the responsibility of marriage. Can I get a witness in the house? I just want a woman so when I get lonely, she can come in my bed. As soon as she start acting a fool, get out. I got a whole black book with 30 other women to come by. Come on, somebody. Instead of going to pick a part, I can go to pick a hole. Hello, somebody. Because any woman that's silly enough to lay up with you and will not, you will not, you will not give her a license is a silly woman laid with sins. Why buy the cow when you can get the milk free? Can I get a witness in the house? And then you talk about these sisters on uh, 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 Housewives of Atlanta. Honey, they like, uh-uh. No, no, no. You ain't parking here till I get a ring. Come on. And when I leave you, I'm taking half what you got. Mr. Millionaire. 
Oh, y'all got quiet. I told one of my members one time she was dating somebody famous and moved in the house. I said, girl, you silly. You moving in the house with the boy. I said, marry him. I don't know, pastor. I, I got to make sure this is my husband. You sleeping with him every night. Marry him. And I don't know why I told her this. I said, because if something happened to him, you ain't going to get nothing. She said, well, I don't know. He's just so in love with me because I'm pretty and curly hair and just light skin. And, and he, he brown skin and he just all over me. I said, let something happen to him. I said, he not going to be all over you and neither is his family. Oh, no, he's going he gonna to leave me everything, pastor. I said, okay, if you don't marry him, you don't have no rights. Sure enough, he died. She called me from the phone during the whole funeral process. Nobody said nothing to her. So she called me. Well, I'm still here. <laughs> I'm still here. They're not trying to put me out. As <laughs> soon as they buried him, the next day they showed up at the door. Get out. And you wasn't entitled to 50 cent. <laughs> Just like these parents. These parents that refuse to give these kids the father's name. I don't want you to have his name because I can't stand him. And when he died, you try to go get his social security. They say, we don't, we don't, he ain't got the same last name. Oh, y'all got quiet. Y'all got quiet. Hello, somebody. I remember, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to tell you all the truth. I'm, I'm going to wrap this up. My mama, her, my Baby brother's father died, was a rich, rich cowboy. He had clubs. He had houses. He had all kinds of stuff in Compton. And I told her, I told her you needed to marry him because she gave the son the same name. But when it came down to it, he had horses and everything. They wouldn't even give her a horseshoe. So you keep on being silly and being a boyfriend or being a girlfriend. You have no rights unless you marry. Amen. I don't want to be married because he get on my nerve. Amen. But what happens, the Bible says iron sharpeneth iron. Sometimes my wife get on my nerve, but it make me grow. It make me think about it. Sometimes I get on her nerve. It make us grow. What are we doing? We're growing above our little pettiness. And we're maturing above our pettiness. Just because you can pay bills don't mean you're a man. Hey, come on, shot. Just because you can please a man don't make you a woman. I've seen women that can please a man but can't clean a house. Can't cook soup out of a can. Can I get a witness in the house? Don't even know how to hug your kids. Let me, let me quit here. Just give you this, I'm done. Elijah, he heard from Jezebel, said, I'm going to kill you like you killed all my prophets. And what did he do? Ran and hide. Just did all these great things for God, and the devil threatened him, and he ran and hid. And the Lord had to go to him and say, Elijah, what you doing in the cave? You know what cave represents? Depression. Cave represents depression. As soon as the devil tells you something, you go into a depression. After God then used you, did all this with you, and you think he's going to leave you now? Turn to your neighbor and say, God ain't going to leave you now. He's not going to leave you just because you heard a threat from the devil? Come on now. He said, come out of there. Man has stopped eating. He's getting skinny. Same one that called fire out from heaven, not eating, getting skinny. He said, come out of here. And the first thing God said, go get you some food. Go eat. You done fasted long enough. Go put some food on your plate and eat. Get some strength. Amen. I didn't say overeat. <laughs> go get some food so you can get some strength. Can I get a witness in the house? As I close this thing. Elisha prayed for a double portion of what? His anointing. Let me tell you this. Never say, God, I want a double portion of the Holy Ghost. Double portion of the Holy Ghost, it don't come in portions. You're either full of it or you're not. <laughs> Amen. 
You're either full of the Holy Ghost or you're not. You either have it or you don't. God don't put half the Holy Ghost in you and the other half he don't. No, no. When you get filled, you filled. Amen. Well, Pastor, I'm filled. How come I still lust? Because the lust is coming from your flesh. But he filled you with the Holy Ghost so that you could overcome your lust. But if you give in to your lust, it ain't the Holy Ghost's fault. Well, Pastor, the Holy Ghost didn't keep me. No, you had the power to be kept. And the Holy Ghost will keep you if you want to be kept. I feel like jumping. I feel like this is the time I want to jump out of my skin and just get through to you. To let you know you got power to overcome the devil. You got power to overcome poverty. You got power to overcome. But you got to use it. You got to use the power that God has given you. So here's just a couple of things. Elijah called fire down from heaven. Killed all the prophets of Baal. And was caught up into heaven. He did those three things. A couple other things he did. But Elisha who asked for a double portion of the anointing. Now this is where you get some wisdom. First thing he did was split the waters as he was going back. He did what Elijah did. He split the waters. Second thing, he predicted the birth of a barren woman. A woman that created a place. Remember I told you about making a sacrifice? You want something from God? Make a sacrifice. What do I mean make a sacrifice? This is what he did. This is what he did. The woman told her husband. The woman said to her husband, honey, that's a man of God. And he didn't look at her and say, what you looking at him for? Why are you looking at that man? I ain't, I ain't fine enough. No, because he had reverence for the anointing. I come up with a shot to their heart. Elijah was walking in the double portion of Elijah's spirit. She recognized and the man honored the anointing. And so she, when she said to her husband, said, honey, let's, let's make a room for the prophet because he looked tired. He said, okay, honey, whatever the Lord tell you to do, you do that. Hello, somebody. And then she made him a bedroom, put a bed and a lamp so he could study. Come on, somebody. And so after she did all that, then she, they made him say, no, no, you need to rest, man of God. You out here, you need to rest. Why? Because God didn't give Elijah a house. God gave them the anoint. God gave them the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the vision to protect the anointing. See, God gives you the vision to protect your anointing. So they gave him a place. After a year, the Bible says she came to his door and with his servant. She, he looked up at her and said, you've shown me kindness. What do you want from the Lord? So you want to come to church when you feel like it. Don't want to give nothing. Don't want to live nothing. But you want God to give you everything. And wonder why God ain't jumping to your beck and call. Because you ain't humbling yourself to him. You think you coming to church day in, day out, year in, year out, God's not going to reward you? Just keep on coming. Watch God reward you. You watch God bless you. You watch God open up the windows of heaven and pour you out of Praise the Lord. This is Bishop Ernest Johnson, and I want you to get a copy of my new book, The Revelation of Jesus' Name, just for your love gift this month of helping me take apostolic television around the world. This is a must-read book. Just some of the chapters I want to share with you is the history of baptism. I want to share that with you. Baptism without repentance, the purpose of baptism, and is baptism really necessary? What if you've already been baptized? If you would like to get those questions answered in your life, get my new book, The Revelation of Jesus' Name, just for supporting us and helping us take apostolic television around the world. Get your monthly love gift of the book, The Revelation of Jesus' Name, for a love gift of $10 or more to help us continue to turn the world upside down. Get yours today.
Praise the Lord. This is Bishop Ernest Johnson, and I have a very special offer for you. I want you to get a copy of my new book, I'm a Faithful Tither, Why Am I Still Broke? Find out in the pages of these books as we discuss sowing and reaping, as we discuss giving, as we discuss tithing, and the most important thing we talk about in this book is the Joseph Principle, how to be a faithful steward over the blessings that God has given you. Log on to our website today and request the book, I'm a Faithful Tither, Why Am I Still Broke? Call a prayer counselor right now and say, Bishop, I want that book. I'm a faithful tither. Why am I still broke? And God will give you the answers of how to prosper even after he pours the blessings out on you. Get your copy today. Praise the Lord. This is Bishop Ernest Johnson inviting you to come to a miracle move of God this Sunday morning at the Jesus is the Answer Apostolic Church. We're located at 25100 South Normandy Avenue in Harbor City, California. Come on out if you need healing, you need deliverance, you need to be saved, you need to be baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost. I want to invite you to come on out to the Jesus is the Answer Apostolic Church. 25100 South Normandy Avenue in Harbor City, California. Join us this this Sunday morning at 11 a.m. and Bible study is Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. Come on out and we'll see you there. Praise the Lord. This is Bishop Ernest Johnson. And for over 30 years, I've preached about it. I've talked about it. I've testified about it. But now I've got it available on DVD. That's right. I've got the message, Heaven, Hell, and the Lake of Fire. And I want you to have it. It's about my true out-of-body experience when I was 18 years old and I was taken into the pit of hell. And I stayed there for two hours. Hell is in the center of this earth. And I want you to get the description of what happened when I went down there and I touched the walls of hell and even people that I knew that was in hell I was trying to pull out. It's so much detail that I just can't share with you right now but I want you to get this and then a year later I was caught up into heaven into the third heaven into Jesus throne room and he instructed me and prophesied to me and told me many great things to come and they have come to pass and finally how God saved me from the lake of fire. So I want you to get your copy of this great detail. DVD today and help keep apostolic television going around the world. Our store address is on the screen right now. You can go there, amen, and pay through PayPal with your credit card, checking account, or whatever, any kind of way you want to pay for it, and we'll ship it out to you within seven days. So get your copy today of Heaven Hill and the Lake of Fire, and you will be blessed.